Badud Janud, Imam of Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Victoria, and Abdul Qadir Razi, President of Ahmadiyya Muslim Associated, for their invitation to speak at today's Peace Symposium at, at Bayt al Salam Mosque. I'd also like to acknowledge distinguished parliamentarians here today. Uh, of course, the Honourable Premier Daniel Andrews, who has uh, left us just before, as well as parliamentarians Neil Burgess, Inga Palage, Sonia Kilkenny, Nina Springle, and Deputy Mayor of our region, Colin Hampton. I'd also like to acknowledge Imam Kauza, who spoke gracefully before on peace in our country as well as Her Ex Excellency, Councillor of India, religious leaders, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start by acknowledging the celebrations of Muslims earlier this week for the Eid al-Adha, the Festival of Sacrifice, which marks the completion of Hajj for those Muslims who partook in their pilgrimage to Mecca this year. This festival commemorates the obedience of Ibrahim and his son Ismail, in obeying the commandments of God, a story of religious faith that is shared by the Abra Abrahamic faith of, Juda Juda of Judaism, Christianity and Islam. This festival also occasions a great outpouring of charitable and philanthropic generosity from the Muslim community towards those from disadvantaged backgrounds experiencing despair, loneliness or financial need which is to be commended and admired by all Australians. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community are a proud and diverse people, composed of ad adherents from a great diversity of ethnic backgrounds and walks of life, who have contributed much towards international peace and global harmony through interfaith dialogue, dialogue and intercultural exchange. And as your local member, in the Federal Parliament of Australia, covering this mosque and this area, I'm very proud to share this day with you. And I would like to use my speech to outline my background, reflections of today's theme of peace, and the important role of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in Australia and throughout the world in promoting this global interfaith dialogue and message of peace. I have seen firsthand the optimism and opportunities afforded to societies that embrace religious understanding and respect, but also celebrate the different religions and the different people from all different backgrounds. Becoming a member of parliament, as was mentioned before, I worked as an international lawyer through the United Nations at the Kosovo Propaganda Agency in, in Kosovo in the former Yugoslavia resolving over 43,000 property claims for people who lost possession of their homes, businesses, farms, because of war. The consequences of failing to achieve respect and understanding of religious and ethnic diversity are horribly seen in such past traumas experienced by ethnic and religious communities within Kosovo and elsewhere. This is also the type of religious persecution that I know some members of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community have experienced and continue to experience in many countries. Whilst the conflict in Kosovo is very disturbing, I'm equally inspired and made optimistic by the positive and harmonious work of religious and community leaders to bring justice and peace. Kosovo is a beautiful country with a proud Islamic history as part of the former Ottoman Empire, in which 91% of citizens declared themselves Muslim. And the influence of their Islamic faith is to be seen and felt through the architecture and, co and culture of their country. I fondly remember breaking bread with my many Muslim friends in Kosovo at the conclusion of Eid al-Fatir, the breaking of the fast and the great outpouring of charitable generosity shown by Muslims towards those less fortunate or in need. In this rare opportunity, working in a post-conflict country in Kosovo, it was inspiring to see the youthful optimism, the cultural exchange, and the religious understanding, and that 
democracy that they held after many years of conflict was clearly not taken for granted. Before leaving Kosovo, I had made the important decision to marry my wife Grace and have our little daughter Yasmin. Grace also immigrated to Australia coming from South Korea with her family at the age of three. And it was Korean veterans, and I understand there are some Korean veterans here today. Without those veterans fighting for freedom in Korea, my wife Grace, and therefore my daughter Yasmin, wouldn't be here. Her dad's family only just made it across the North Korean side, and they haven't seen their relatives in North Korea since. So I do have a personal understanding of conflict as well. And my family is testament to the great value of cultural exchange, multiculturalism and diversity that can be experienced in love, which promotes the foundation for the religious and cultural understanding necessary to secure global peace and harmonious living. I do believe that the greater diversity of people, views and ideas, the better the solutions and decisions made in any organisation or indeed country. And I raised this in my maiden speech earlier this week. And I raised what our founder of the Liberal Party, Sir Robert Menzies, has said when he said, quite clearly, stagnant waters are level and in them the scum rises. But active waters are never level. They toss and tumble, but purify themselves in a few hundred yards. And this is an example of the fact that when we have diversity in our community, we thrive as a community. While I grew up and practiced the Christian faith, I'd like to reflect on the importance of faith in my life and also my conception of religious dialogue and exchange to facilitate peace. What does unite the believers of Judaism, Christianity and Islam is far greater than which divides us. Values such as generosity, faithfulness, integrity, honesty and a love of God are all cornerstones of all Abrahamic religious traditions and they provide a solid foundation for religious faith, freedom, understanding and exchange of ideas. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community have contributed more than most towards this understanding and global peace through their initiatives. In particular, I have been most impressed by the peace mission efforts of the fifth caliph and global leader of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, His Holiness, Mr. Mirza Masroor Ahmad, whose selfless activities in advocating interfaith dialogue and cultural exchange to global leaders and policymakers are to be admired. Speaking in Sydney in 2014, His Holiness reflected upon the Ahmadiyya Muslim community when he described this community is belonging to a community that not only promotes peace, but whose every act and activity is conducted in an entirely peaceful manner. It is for these reasons that even those who are not well acquainted with our community will have felt at ease joining us today. I am drawn by the peaceful manner and instinctive kindness of both His Holiness and Ahmadiyya Muslims in Australia and around the world. And I look forward to becoming even more acquainted with your community in, a, in the fashion described by His Holiness. I would like to conclude my remarks where I began them by thanking and paying my respects to the worshippers at, at the Bait al-Salam al 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 Mosque here today for hosting me. And as as a thank you as well for spreading the message of love for all and hatred for none. Thank you and Eid Mubarak.